All right, live in Manhattan, and I came across a willing participant, as in Scorpio Cesar, man. Hey, what's up, man? Yo, man, yo, I gotta ask, man. Yo, how you doing, by the way? I gotta go to work, man. Psst. Yeah, we don't need work. We're talking about game of the year. Yo, bro, what's your game of the year for 2021? My game of the year? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna tell you. Okay. My game of the year is Metroid Dread. Why? Because it takes a classic Thank you game. very much. Okay, that's his game of the year. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bowser's Fury is a game that took me by surprise. For the first time ever, Mario is dropped into a truly open world playfield where we collect the various cat shines spread across the world. Each of the different islands contain different obstacles we must overcome. The main appeal to Bowser's Fury is Bowser himself. He is the most menacing yet by relentlessly attacking Mario. Luckily, Mario learned how to turn into a Super Saiyan and can fight back. Bowser's Fury looks to be a glimpse into the future to where 3D Mario games can go. Monster Hunter Rise did the impossible. It made me a fan of the franchise. Something about Rise just clicked with me that no other game in the series has yet to do. I even bought Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate and I ended up just not getting into it. Rise, on the other hand, has an incredible art style and fun gameplay. Traversing the various locations, hunting down monsters offline and online is exhilarating. Grinding, trying to get the next cool armor and weapon sets is extremely rewarding. I may have seen the credits roll, but I feel like there's still so much more to do in the game. Cyber Shadow is awesome. I am a sucker for retro throwback style games. As you travel, make your way through each of the different levels, you will learn new abilities and cool techniques to use against the various boss fights. The soundtrack is fantastic, and the sprite work is very detailed. Cyber Shadow is definitely worth your time. Super Robot Wars 30 is just damn good. I first got into this franchise with Super Robot Wars T, and I immediately got hooked. Seeing all these different robots come together from different mech anime is just a sight to see. Super Robot Wars 30 is a turn-based tactical strategy game and somewhat of a visual novel. The big draw to this game has to be the completely over-the-top attacks. I don't consider these games too challenging, so I think it's the perfect series to jump into and try it out if you're not familiar with this genre. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart sure was a surprising game for sure. Not only is the graphics really good, but Rift Apart really feels like a next-gen experience and shows off the capabilities of the PlayStation 5. No load times and the use of the PS5's adaptive triggers make this game even more immersive. Also, the weapons are fantastic like always, and the story blends comedy and the more serious moments perfectly. If you're somehow able to find a PS5, you gotta play Rift Apart. Such a great game. Mario Party Superstar is the Mario Party I've been waiting years for. The classic gameplay, normal dice blocks, 20 coins to get the star, and absolutely no motion controls. This game is a love letter to the franchise, with the true return of not only the classic gameplay, but the boards and minigames, all from previous entries in the series. I've already sunk a lot of time into this game playing with friends and family. Mario Party is back, and I love it. Tormented Souls. I can't believe I played a fantastic throwback to the golden age of survival horror. Tormented Souls takes place in a mansion-slash-hospital hybrid and nails the creepy atmosphere and feeling as you navigate through the different rooms solving really challenging puzzles. This game has tank controls as well. I really hope Tormented Souls gets a sequel, because I really enjoyed what I played.
Eastward may seem like just another Zelda-like experience, but it's so much more than that. You will right away notice the striking visuals and character designs. Each of the different environments you travel through really makes you feel like you're going on an epic journey. The music is played perfectly in the right moments as you progress through the story with John and Sam, uncovering the mystery of what's going on in this world. This is one of the most beautiful post-apocalyptic worlds I've ever seen, and this is definitely a game you should play. At long last, we finally have Metroid Dread, a proper follow-up to Metroid Fusion after all these years. Metroid Dread is just simply amazing. Samus now, better than ever, controls with extremely tight gameplay and new mechanics to get her through this adventure. Metroid games always made you feel like a true badass, and Metroid Dread is no different. Metroid Dread definitely lives up to the hype, with some of the coolest boss fights in the franchise yet. Also, the Emmy robots truly brought me a feeling of dread anytime I had to frantically run and hide. The Queen of Metroidvania is back, and better than ever. From start to finish, Resident Evil Village was one big roller coaster ride. We once again play as Ethan Winters, trying to find his daughter in a creepy village. While the game still has a lot of survival horror elements, I would say Village takes a Resident Evil 4 approach by bringing more action into the mix as the game gets super over the top by the end of the story. Although I will say, there is one segment in the game that was extremely terrifying, but I'll leave it at that. I've beaten this game several times, and I plan on playing through it again. With fantastic antagonists, location, weapons, and the return of the mercenaries mode, Resident Evil Village is the most fun I've had with a game this year, and that's why it's my game of the year for 2021. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment below your thoughts on today's topic. Please consider subscribing to the channel, and hit that bell to be notified when the next Surge My Next video drops. Have a good one.